because anytime that I have some informational um, stuff that I can put out there for people to, n to know sometimes what they don't know, I feel compelled to show that evidence because my channel has always been evidence-based. Um, I don't have copies of the MTCNA, the TCNA, all these organizations out there that have all these rules to follow because I don't believe that they be true, that they be true, in real life experience and real life experience has taught me this one thing which i'm going to show you this house is over 20 years old and as you can see there is no um, mold and mildew build up i think there's a, a little bit something going on there but just minuscule and i'm not really sure what that is but Overall, it's pristine. 20 years later, there's not all the mold and mildew. There's not, you know, like it's a solid wall. This wall is made up of sheetrock and green board. And the green board is what the tile was attached to, right? So they had sheetrock and then green board on top of that and then tile. And, you know, back in the day, that's what we used. In the 80s and going into the 90s, it was all sheetrock. And so everybody, even the MTCNA says it's not advisable um, to use sheetrock in a shower. And it's not advisable to use mastic, although for many, many years, both of them worked. Although mastic on a smaller format tile is more than appropriate. Um, so no issue there. What I'm trying to explain, you see that gap? see there right that's what I propose that people do I put out a video some months ago I don't know maybe it was last year where I said don't let your backer board no matter what it is set on the edge of the tub put it at the lip and when I say put it at the lip yes I ideally want my backer board sitting squarely right there on the lip that's what I want and then my tile overlaps that with that three-quarter gap that's hollow right so even if water gets through your caulking and all that stuff, the water is just going to kind of sit here on the edge of the tub and not have an ability to wake up right there where people purport, yes, it's supposed to be on the edge of the tub. Sal is one of those, I'm not gonna get into the YouTube drama. Don't listen to a lot of the stuff that he says because he's a book soldier and he doesn't ever show, all he ever says is you might have a problem and it might not be five years or 10 years or 20 years or a hundred years, but you might have a problem, but he never shows the evidence. And I'm very proud on my channel whenever I report something that I can literally show the evidence. There is a gap in here for water to kind of sit there and not go into the sheetrock or whatever backer board you have and cause mold and mildew and or wick up your backer board and compromise all your, yeah very very solidly built shower from 20 years ago using sheetrock using mastic and having the back of board not touch the edge of the tub not touch the edge of the tub can i repeat that a third time don't have your back of board sitting on top of the edge of the tub this is case in point this is why i purport when i put out my videos and show evidence based videos this isn't something, none of my advice is something that I just came up with out of the top of my brain or I read in a book. This is based on my tear outs. Every time I do a tear out, I find failures or I find wonderful things that lasted through the years where there's no mold and mildew on this sheetrock, where the sheetrock's not compromised, it's not soft or anything like that, and where the wallboard is not sitting on the edge. I don't know why I have to go into the explanations so intensely. I guess some people just don't get it. Taking all this wallboard and tile outside. Oops, that's the top side. Here's the bottom side. 
and here's what I'm trying to get at you, right? Sheetrock, big no-no. Putting the backer board on the edge of the tub instead of the lip, absolutely. This is the proof when I stay, when I say things in my videos, this is evidence that I present. Now, having said that, we do have a little bit of mold right there. I think that's where, on the other side, I think that's where I was showing a um, little bit of mold. So it's very possible the water pooled up around this area and there was some vapor that just got in there continuously with a little black mold showing. But a little black mold on some sheetrock 20 years later is not a bad build at all. Not a bad build. And none of the sheetrock is compromised. I can't show the back because it's so heavy. Yeah, none of it's compromised. There's no mold or mildew. There's no softness because water got into it or anything like that. So I'm not saying this is a good way to build because, you know, we moved away from that and started waterproofing stuff, but it worked. And it worked for a good part of 25, 30 years if it's done right. Again, everything you do in life is prone to operator malfunction. And many a shower that were built in the 80s and 90s weren't done correctly despite the method that was used. Um, so yeah, think like water, folks. That's all you have to do, think like water. And these guys thought like water. They knew back then what I'm telling you now. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.